Your Health is Your Wealth. My name is Argo Duenas, and I'm your host for today. I'm also the owner of Back to Nature Health and Wellness Center, a local holistic center that has served the Baltimore, D.C., Virginia, Eastern Shore area for 30 years. I'm honored to have as my very special guest today, Dr. Ali Goodlow, who is a retired radiologist who studied mindful meditation for 20 years. She's here today to empower us and to share with us how we can use those wonderful tools and techniques to manage stress, anxiety, and depression. Welcome, Dr. Ali, to Your Health is Your Wealth. And thank you for traveling today from DC to be my very special guest today. Well, thank you for having me. And how are you today? I'm great. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, before we talk about mindful meditation and the wonderful techniques that you have employed for 20 years to help you personally reduce stress mm -hmm. and anxiety, tell us something about Dr. Ali, where you come from, your family, um, and what you're currently doing at the present time. Okay, well, I'm originally from Detroit, Michigan, and my journey towards medicine began uh, after I finished uh, high school at uh, Central High School in Detroit. I left there and attended a community college to do a certificate program for a medical office assistant. So while I was doing the office, a medical office assistant uh, certificate program, I was approached by the uh, counselor and she informed me of a another program at Henry Ford Hospital that they had for um, x-ray technologists and asked me if I would be interested in uh, attending that program. So I did, I applied and I got in and that was a two-year course. From there I practiced um, being a technician for about two or three years and um, I got married and had a daughter the next year but then the marriage didn't work. <laughs> and so I decided that I would go to college. So I began college at the age 25, and um, I went to the University of Michigan. And while I was attending school, I discovered that most of my classmates were pre-med. So I said, well, let me try. Mm -hmm. So I did, after I graduated from um, University of Michigan, I had a major in psychology. I've always been interested in the mind-body connection. So from University of Michigan, um, I was accepted into Wayne State Medical School. At what age were you then? At, four, at 30. At That's 30. quite impressive. At 30, at 30. you're in medical school. At, yes. Wow. Yes. And so, um, I did medical school and then that was four years. And on completion, you have to choose where you're going to do general medicine or you're going to specialize in something. And I wanted to do psychiatry because my undergrad major was psychology. And during my senior rotation, I went to a um, state mental uh, facility and um, I was so moved by the patients that the severity of mental illness. When I came home, I was unable to detach from their stories. So I decided that wouldn't be a good um, fit, right, mm -hmm. path for me. Right. So I said, well, let me try diagnostic radiology. Mm -hmm. And so um, diagnostic radiology is very competitive to get in. Most hospitals have only one or two seats. And most of my colleagues were kind of discouraging me from trying that because you have a hard time getting in. Most people went into internal medicine or pediatrics or sur general surgery. But I was determined that I was gonna go for what I wanted. So I applied to the uh, hospitals in the Michigan area. And uh, in medical school, during that time, they have a thing what they call match program. And the, you put your uh, application into the hospital, and then they decide if they're going to accept you. And if they do, it's called a match. And so I applied to the hospitals that I wanted to go to. And um, they have a day at the 
medical school called Match Day. So the night before Match Day, I received a call and they told me not to come because I didn't match. And so I said, oh boy. So um, I decided that I would try to pursue my own to make a match. During my senior year, I came to Washington, D.C. at Howard University Hospital and did a senior rotation. And during that rotation, the radiologist was impressed that I could read quite a few of the films because of my history of being an x-ray tech. Correct. So I asked them if they had an opening. And just by, I won't say luck, but I divine order, a exactly. seat was available. So they invited me to come down. And uh, I did my four years of uh, uh, training at Howard University Hospital as a diagnostic radiologist. Okay, what's the difference between a diagnostic and um, then there's another kind of radiologist? Okay, what's yeah. a, a the therapeutic? The therapeutic radiology is they treat uh, cancer okay. through radiation. Okay. Diagnostic radiologists diagnose. Okay. No treatment. Okay. So um, from there, um, what was your first employment as a radiologist? Was it at Howard or? No, when I finished Howard, uh, my first job was with Group Health mm -hmm. on Pennsylvania Avenue in D.C. Okay. I worked there for about a year, and then I left and went to Kaiser Permanente. Okay. But Kaiser eventually wind up merging, merging. with Group Health. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, Dr. Ollie, when did you decide to focus on mind-body mm -hmm. wellness? Well, I was diagnosed with hypertension, mm -hmm. and even though I'm a physician, I wasn't too uh, eager about taking medications. Mm -hmm. So I tried to look at um, other areas that what I could do for myself to mm -hmm. kind of decrease that. And um, so I, in the late um, 90s, mm -hmm. I took a program with John Capet Zinn mm -hmm. through the University of Massachusetts, and he has a uh, program uh, based on mindfulness, mindfulness-based uh, stress reduction gotcha. program. Right. And so I used meditation as a complementary um, method to decrease my blood pressure, and it worked. I'm not completely off of uh, medication, but I've decreased it quite a bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's talk some, somewhat about the stressors in life because, you know, um, you know, I just made a massive move. You're dear, my dear friend. Mm -hmm. And I was even telling the videographer, my God, how, you know, it was so challenging and so stressful for me. But there are stressors uh, that really can create health problems for us. Uh, in, in my practice as a holistic health practitioner, every day I see young people, especially Dr. Ali, coming in on anxiety medication, uh, depression medication, and they're stressed out with their jobs, they're on jobs that they don't really like, or they're working two or three jobs be just because of the economy right now. So um, stress, I think, is a major factor in creating illness. But in our conversation, you were saying that we create this stress stress through our thought processes. Mm -hmm. Now, I uh, know that many years you have really worked with your stress reduction program. You've gone to New Mexico, mm -hmm. you've, you've traveled, and you've helped a lot of people manage their stress with the mind. Mm -hmm. So would you elaborate on that a little bit more? Yeah, that's the basis of uh, mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Mindfulness is allowing you to observe your thoughts moment by moment, what's on your mind, body, and emotions without judgment. And as, as you said before, Argo, the stress is created by our thoughts. Mm -hmm. We think uh, approximately 60,000 thoughts per day. Say that again, please. 60,000 thoughts per day. That's a lot of thinking, yes, thoughts lot of going thinking. through the mind. And most of those thoughts are negative. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we have a story going on in our minds that's con it's our own theme story, mm -hmm. and we're the main character in there. So we're always telling ourselves stories. And interesting enough, the mind is a tool, and it doesn't like to have incomplete stories. 
Say that again. It doesn't like to have incomplete what do you stories. Mean? What do you mean by that? Okay, I'm going to give you an example. Okay. Now, say one day uh, a young lady moved into a neighborhood. She's 24 years old. Okay. So she's new to the neighborhood. She moves mm -hmm. in. And then across the street from her are two middle-aged ladies. They're sitting on the porch in the evening sipping their lemonade. And they notice a young man drives up in the car. He gets out of the car and he goes into the house. Now he stays about 10 or 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Then he comes out. Mm -hmm. Then they notice another young man drives up. Mm -hmm. He goes into the house, stays 15 minutes, and he comes out. But then another young man mm -hmm. comes, goes in, stays 10 minutes. 15 minutes and comes out. Mm -hmm. Then finally, the local priest comes in to check on her. She had been ill. And each of the visitors were there to check on her well-being. Now, most of the people, when I teach this program at the rehab center down at For Some, the... What is SOME again? It's an acronym. So, yeah, so others might eat. Okay. This is a nonprofit. Nonprofit okay. in Washington, D.C. Okay. I work with the uh, wellness program for under addiction rehab. Most of them thought that maybe she could have been selling drugs. Mm -hmm. Others people thought that maybe she could have been a call girl. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to show you is that our mind, I gave you the story. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't give you the end that the priest came to check on her for her well-being, your mind automatically makes its own story up to complete the story. It doesn't like to have incomplete stories. So what happens is we walk around with these stories, and most of the time they're not true. But we tell ourselves those stories over and over and over again. And so through mindfulness, you're able to observe your thoughts, you watch your thoughts, you see what you're creating. And that's why I went ahead and I developed this journal called Just Observe Yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, through this journal, it's 30 days, you have opportunity to observe your thoughts, just write little notes in the journal to see what you're thinking. Are you in the past? Are you in the future? Or are you living in the moment? Now, most of us live in the past and the future, and very seldom do we live in the now. When you live in the present, you decrease the stress cycle in your body. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm still pr really trying to get that and practice it, but I have noticed, you know, because I've taken many self-help courses myself, mm -hmm. I really have, and I've been working on myself. This is a story, right? Mm -hmm. we are, we're all on our personal journey, and this is why I have this show, just to, um, you know, really encourage people and to empower people, but to let, you know, folks know that um, we all have a story, we're all on a journey, mm -hmm. and to be authentic with ourselves, and um, to really seek you know, um, to, to become the greatest and highest vision of who we've been called to be. Am I right? Correct. So we really have to tune into our, our mind and our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a book called The Power of Nine, uh, of Now mm -hmm. by Eckhart Tolle. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And um, I found that book to be very helpful as well. I've taken your course, course as well, Just Observe Yourself. Mm -hmm. And just recently, you have really been a blessing to me, honestly, because mm -hmm. I've been going like, oh my God, this is just too much. I'm stressed out, I'm, you know, all over the top, and I'm reacting instead of, you know, just being in the present moment mm -hmm. and being still. So meditation really is a very powerful tool to allow us to just to stay in the present moment. And right now, I'm in the present moment with you. So, uh, tell us about the origin of, of, of mindfulness and, and where that practice came from and how you were able to bridge Eastern medicine with Western medicine mm -hmm. at Kaiser. Yes, well, mindfulness originated thousands and thousands of years ago and it was brought up firstly in, the, in, the, um, Buddhist, in Buddhism. Mm -hmm. 
and through um, John Capet Zinn, uh, through uh, University of Massachusetts, he developed a program, the Mindfulness-Based Stress Reduction Program, and that's how it started to infiltrate through the U.S. and even over in Europe. I, when I took the program with John Capet Zinn, I came back to Kaiser and started a pilot program to help the patients there people that had chronic pain, mm -hmm. uh, people as well who overutilized the system. What do you mean by that? Patients that constantly called um, for appointments. Uh, Kaiser is the HMO. And so they were some patients that tend to call a lot. If we felt that if we could get them in the program, decrease their stress, that would help their bodies. The pain would decrease. Now, John Kepin Zinn is known for lots of research that they showed that chronic pain decreases when you practice mindfulness meditation. Give me an example. Okay. Well, what happens, we just kind of switch over to the neuroscience of it. Right. Okay. What happens in the body, in the brain, when you have a pain say you have a pain in your knee and you tell yourself that pain hurts, well, the neural tracts are going to send energy to increase that pain. Now with mindfulness, we teach you not to say it hurts. You're not denying that the pain is there, mm -hmm. but we want you to observe the pain. You, you say, is it tingling? Is it moving? Is it cramping? By changing the tracks in your brain, you're decreasing the, the uh, pain receptors in that area. And so by doing that, you decrease the pain in your body. You literally are increasing the gray matter in your brain by creating new tracks with new thoughts. Wow. So there's a saying, you can use your mind to change your brain for the better. Just with thinking and changing your thought patterns. By thinking new thoughts. New thoughts. We, what, out of those 60,000 thoughts, mm -hmm. we're usually thinking the same thoughts over and over again. And the same thing happens with the chronic pain. Mm -hmm. So if you have chronic pain, you're going to be saying, you're saying it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. So the mind is causing more tracks uh, to go, it's making those tracks deeper and deeper. I give an example, uh, like you're on the ocean and you have uh, footprints in the sand mm -hmm. and the water comes up and it falls in the sand. Same tracks, yes. Yeah, and so each time that water comes, it keeps goes into the sand and makes it deeper and deeper. Each time we think the same thoughts, we're oh. making those tracks deeper and deeper. Wow. So if you can change the track or make a new track, you're going to decrease the sensation to that area where you, that's causing the pain receptors. Wow, that is, is that new science or? <laughs> no, it's been out for uh, quite a few years, at least about 20 years or so. So creating new thoughts, patterns. It's called neuroplasticity. Okay, neuroplasticity. Neural, new. Right. Plast, Plast creating new tracks in the brain. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Instead of, okay, so in other words, whatever we focus on expands for layman's. If we focus on the pain, it's going to expand because we're thinking about the pain and we're and we are affirming that it's painful. Right. So. It's not so much expanding, but you're just creating the tracks, the okay. energy to create the same thing over, over and, and over and over, over again. again. Wow. And that's how mindfulness comes in, because okay. it makes you aware mm -hmm. of your thoughts. Okay. Instead of telling yourself it hurts, you stop that story and create a new story. Okay. That, not that it hurts, mm -hmm. but it's there. So you say to, to, to practice it just observing yourself mm -hmm. and your thought patterns without judgment. Exactly. Okay. So what are some of the health benefits then of, of these techniques? Well, there are many. Uh, the most important ones, the ones I like, is that over time they decrease anxiety, mm -hmm. they decrease stress, they improve hypertension, 
and the increased mood and memory. Now over in England, uh, mindfulness is used as a post-treatment after you've been treated for depression. They don't necessarily put you on medication. They put you into a mindfulness meditation program. In Europe? In Europe. And this is integrated into their medical system? Yes, it is. Wow. Yeah. Because through when you practice mindfulness meditation, you're, the neuroscience of it, the area in your brain called the amygdala mm -hmm. is associated with stress, anxiety, and fear. And the other part, the prefrontal portion of your brain, is which we call is the executive director, that's where you make decisions. When you practice mindfulness meditation, the amygdala decreases in size. Mm. And so that's the area where fear, anxiety, and stress reside. Wow. And so then, if you do it over time, it's mm -hmm. at least eight weeks, mm -hmm. 30 minutes a day, that area of your brain literally decreases. The amygdala. The amygdala. amygdala. Okay. And so, therefore, you're less stressed. Mm -hmm. You're less stressed. So how does the breath, how do, how do you use the breath as a way to bring you into the present moment? Right, exactly. Mindfulness, we usually use the breath as the anchor mm -hmm. to the present moment. Okay. So as long as you're breathing, you can always meditate with mindfulness. That's what I like about mindfulness as opposed to some of the other meditation techniques. There are informal ways you can um, meditate mm -hmm. and formal ways. Now, informal way of meditating, because remember, mindfulness is uh, moment to moment, self-awareness on your mind, body, and emotions without judgment. So you can just, when you drink water, you pick up the cup, you feel the cup, you just, the water comes to your, your lips, you feel the warmth or the cold of the solution, you feel it how it goes into your mouth. Each of those things are keeping you in the moment. Now that's an informal way. So you're drinking throughout the day, so you always have a time of what I call a joy moment. Mm -hmm. Just observe yourself. By doing that, you're stopping the stress cycle in your brain because your brain is constantly thinking thoughts. And so that stops the stories going on or worrying about the past or worrying about the future. It's keeping you in the moment and that causes your body to relax. So, for instance, like right now, in mm -hmm. this very present moment, I'm focusing on my conversation with you mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just the, the energy of just being in the present moment. So it could be like drinking water or whatever we're doing at the moment to focus on that. And right? right. Rather, and then that takes us out of our thinking mind. Exactly. It takes us out of the, the past mm -hmm. and it helps us to stay focused right in the present instead of thinking about what's going to happen the next minute like my videographer <laughs> right, exactly one time so, one moment one place right because right. even though you're sitting here right your mind may not be here absolutely you can be think like you said thinking about the videographer right right, right. so the more that you can keep your mind Focus. in the moment, moment right and so Eat another, with the breath. With the breath. With the breath. Well, it doesn't have to be the, the breath, breath, but say, because before we used the cup right. in the water. Right. But if you're just out and you feel so, yourself getting stressed, you use the breath. You feel the air as it goes in your nose. Cool. Then you can feel it coming out. And then you notice you check in what we call with the five senses. You notice your body. You know, what do you... Um, what do you feel? What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? Do you feel your body sitting on the chair? Mm -hmm. All of those things keep you in the moment. Right, right. When's the best time to meditate or practice this? Mm -hmm. In the morning, or like you say, you can do it all day long, right? right. Well, initially, most meditations, they say the ancient way, it says sunrise and sunset. Okay. But with mindfulness, like I said, you can do it any time. When you wake up, you get out of the bed, you can just feel the sensation of your feet touching the floor. Mm -hmm. When you're taking a shower, you can feel the water. That's all of those 
techniques are keeping your mind in the moment. Now there's the formal way to do it is sitting meditation where you put out a special amount of time, say 30 minutes, mm -hmm. to sit and the focus is on your breath. You okay. just sit. Now your mind is going to wander as you're sitting there focusing on your breath. But each time your mind wanders away thinking about tomorrow or what happened yesterday, yesterday mm -hmm. you say, oh, I'm supposed to be focusing on my breath. Right. In that yeah. moment when you notice that you have drifted away from thinking, uh, focusing on your breath, you've just started to practice mindfulness. Okay. You bring your mind back to the breath each time you feel that you, you notice that you've wandered off. And so what you're doing, you're training the mind to stay in the moment. Wonderful. I know that you've worked with children, and you say in the Baltimore school system now, they have mindful meditation in their public school. Is that correct? That's correct. They have a detention um, room mm -hmm. where if the children are acting out, instead of sending them home or mm -hmm. uh, giving them some days off, they let them go into the meditation room Wonderful. and they teach them um, mindfulness and I, they notice a big difference. I've also noticed it in the hospitals as well. They have yes. a little areas, a little sanctuary where people can go and just be quiet and still. We only have a few minutes left, Dr. Ollie. Mm -hmm. Are there any closing comments, anything you want to share with our viewers? Well, I think um, mindfulness meditation has really changed my life. And so I would recommend everybody's life has stress in it. Mm -hmm. So everybody can benefit from uh, mindfulness meditation. I would say um, to try to uh, see if they can find a program okay. that could help them out. All right, now we got a one minute left. Give us a website where our viewers can c contact you if they want to learn more about meditation and how, the, how to use those wonderful techniques to manage and decrease stress. Okay, they can go to justobserveyourself.com. Okay, mm -hmm. once again? Justobserveyourself.com. Just observe yourself. <laughs> Back to nature once again, thanking you for watching Your Health is Your Wealth. And remember, in this very present moment, we do have the power to take charge of our life and our health. And I want to thank Dr. Ollie Goodlow for coming here today and offering up those wonderful uh, techniques. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Goodlow. Thank you. Thank you.